do. We love to eat um, in venison steaks. And you see my packages, they're frozen. And in, in Louisiana, we have white tail deer. So that's what these are, some white tail deer steaks. And John harvested them. I don't hunt, but if you're going to harvest something, then I'm going to cook it up. We're going to eat it. We're not going to waste it, that's for sure. And so I got these out to thaw earlier today, and they need to soak. That's the only thing about wild game is you need to soak them, and I soak mine in salt water. And I want to tell you, it does not make your meat salty, okay? Don't think that. But do you see how dark red that is? That's a lot of blood in this deer. And so, all I'm doing is just, all it does is draw out some, a lot of that blood, most or all of the blood, honestly, the salt water does. And that way it doesn't taste so wild and it just leaves a nice sweet meat flavor. And if, once you fall in love with deer steak or venison steak, you'll like it better than you do beef. And I know we're growing beef cows, so shh. But anyway, it's just a nice little treat. Okay, guys, y'all see. Let me rinse my hands and grab us some more water, okay? You close up the chickens for me, baby? Thank you, Thank you darling. Alright, guys, sorry I left y'all. I had to get us some more water. Okay, y'all see what I'm doing. I just put them in here and I'll put these back in the refrigerator okay my beans or my peas I'll just leave out on the counter soaking overnight but this of course I'll put back in the refrigerator and I just take salt iodized salt okay and I generously put it in here y'all see what I'm doing generous because like I say this does not make your meat salty okay I promise I'll drain this off um once it soaks overnight in the refrigerator and then it will continue to thaw in the refrigerator. And it will be ready for us to uh, marinate them and bread them and get them fried up tomorrow. For <laughs> I do want to apologize because I'm going to have to put these videos, this is a YouTube video and um, I'm going to have to put this on Facebook too because when my grow baby spent the night, my other little camera that I do for Facebook, it kind of got unplugged from charge. Hmm. <laughs> but hey, that's a misdemeanor, right? Exactly. So anyway, I drained those deer steaks that y'all saw me put in salt water to just draw out some of the blood. I drained them in this colander. And then I'm going to put them back in the bowl, just like that. There we are. And the only things that I marinate with is buttermilk. Buttermilk is fantastic. Yes, it is. So good. It gives flavor and tenderizes. It's just fantastic. That's about all that buttermilk. <laughs> and then I use Louisiana hot sauce. And it doesn't make this deer meat hot at all, but it gives it nice, nice flavor, okay? And then I will make a flour that I'll drain these again in that colander after they marinate for a while. I'm going to put these back in the refrigerator. Y'all see, I'm just shaking, shake, shake, shaking that hot sauce like that. I don't know how much to tell you that was. I really don't. And I'll kind of move them around a bit, let everything get on to everything, and I'll put the lid back on. I'll put these back in the refrigerator. And let this sit for 30 minutes. You can let it sit a couple of hours, but just about 30 minutes, and you'll be ready to fry them. Okay, guys, I have got y'all over here to the stove. Here is our deer steaks that we have marinating. My marinated about an hour, and I took them out of the refrigerator, and I'm draining them in this colander to get most of that buttermilk off. And then I fixed me a little bowl of some all-purpose flour with a little bit of salt and pepper, just a little sprinkle. And I am breading some of these things in this salt and pepper. I hope y'all can see this. I know. I'm having to bend down to see if y'all can even see it. <laughs> I might have to raise y'all up here in a minute. That's getting kind of aggravating. Let me see. See if we're ready. Let me try one out, guys. I believe we are. I'm going to 
raise y'all up a little bit so y'all can see my grease. I got some hot grease here. And I believe that's just vegetable oil. You can use corn oil, canola oil, or peanut oil, whatever you want to use, okay? And I've got it on medium high. Medium high, if that tells you anything, anything at all. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, see them start to sizzling. Frying up. I am going, y'all see my big bowl of deer steaks. I'm going to be frying for a while. I'll do this first batch with y'all, though. How about that? Let y'all see how long they go. Get a couple of more breaded. You don't want to crowd them in there so they can fry crispy. When you first put them in there, they almost sound what I call angry. They're frying up really hard. And you'll hear them in a minute. That frying sound will go a lot lower, which means they're not so angry. And they're ready to take up. Out of the frying pan. There we go. We will see how long that is. I really couldn't tell, y'all. Uh, maybe just a couple of minutes or a few minutes. Hey, Addie Lou. <laughs> I just want to come get in on it. Addie, I'm going to try to raise everybody up. I'm not sure if this is going to help or hinder. I just don't know. I'm trying to get y'all over here where you can see everything. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, guys. Um, I was going to show y'all what we've got going on. Fried cabbage. I just chopped my cabbage up and I washed it in my colander. And then I put some bacon grease in the bottom of the pan with a, just a tiny bit of water. And I fried it, like stir fried it. And now I'm just letting it sit and kind of stay warm and sort of steam it a bit. And of course, I put some salt and pepper. And then we've got corn. I just used some frozen corn. The grandbabies love that. And here is our peas that we've got going. These purple whole peas. I did go down to the candy kitchen and get a bigger pot for them, I know. And then here's our mashed potatoes. I'm hard to pick it up. <laughs> our cream potatoes. I always call them mashed potatoes, but they're sitting here nice and warm in that glass. That glass mixing bowl, I'm so excited to have. Yeah. Did y'all hear these? They settled down a little bit. They're getting close. I'm going to flip them. Let's see here. Let me get something else to flip them with. See if I can come down on the beer stage. How about that? Oh, my God. Oh, uh, they're the beer steaks. Okay. These are looking good, aren't they, Addie? These were the date beer steaks. They are, but they're not cooked, baby. These are the cooking ones. Aren't they looking good? But they're a blonde color. We want them to get toasty brown, don't we? Toasty. Toasty brown. So we're going to keep them a-going. Isn't that fun? Put them in. This is a pan that I like to use. Um, see if I can get y'all back the other way. Zoom out. Zoom in. Zoom out. There we go. I like to use this pan. It's got this little rack in it in case a little bit of grease likes to drip off the bottom. That way they all stay nice and crispy. And I've got my oven on warm. Not the one I have the rolls in, but the other one. And um, it's going to uh, keep them nice and warm till all the family gets here. All the parents of these grandkiddos, huh? <laughs> well, can I get a Reese's Pieces? You can, baby. Get your Reese's Pieces and then that'll be enough. Okay, y'all. They have been going exactly three more minutes, okay? And they really got calmed down here. And they're frying. So maybe five, six minutes all together. I was just going to show y'all one frying because y'all see I got to get with it. <laughs> I won't do my fast forward again. We'll just, y'all just take me at my word, huh? I did that on the sausage box and I watched it and I laughed and laughed. It was funny looking. <laughs> funny looking. There we go. 
And that's what we're going to get. I'll come back when I get through with the whole entire pan. How about that, guys? See y'all in a little bit. Okay, y'all. We have finished the deer study. Yes, we have. You can talk a minute. It's not going to pick up over here. And while this grease, this uh, grease that we fried our deer steaks in while it's good and hot, and it's got mulatto hot over here, I'm going to scoop up some of it like that. Put it over in my cast iron skillet. And I love to scrape and get some of that sediment that went to the bottom off the breading of the deer steak. Y'all see that? I love that in there too. That gives it a nice little flavor. Okay. Put that there. I have my whisk. What I do with it? Y'all see what I do with that whisk? There it is. There it is. Alright, I'm going to get some flour. Just some all-purpose flour. And you try to do equal amounts of flour to your oil. And if you're starting for the first time, do about a quarter cup to a half a cup of oil and a quarter cup of a half a cup of flour. Same amount. I kind of just eyeball it. If it's still a little too liquidy, I'll put a little more flour. I think it's going to need just a little bit more flour. Y'all see that grease that we used, that vegetable oil? It's already good and brown from frying the deer steak in it, so it already kind of does some of the work for you, doesn't it? Just another small little sprinkling. Yes, I'm going to show y'all the, the venison steaks. Let me get them out. Let's stir this in another minute, y'all. A few seconds. Let's turn that down a little bit. Let's cook it up quickly on this burner. I'll put y'all over here. And I'll show y'all that big pile of venison steaks that I turned off and we worked on. Let's see, where are they? Here they are. Here they are. Looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> if something's left over, y'all know I'll put them in the crock pot for John and me later in the week. Show y'all these rolls that just came out. Here's these yeast rolls we were doing earlier. Y'all see those? They look good, don't they? Ooh, they look good. They're hot. They're good and hot. Alright, back down to our gravy. My camera just told me something, y'all. I don't know if it said the battery's low. I'm trying to find the battery on here. Yep, that's it. I'm going to switch batteries out so I won't lose y'all. Okay, y'all. See how it's browned a little more? I've been stirring it with the whisk occasionally. Just babysitting on it. And I believe, so we can get this show on the road, I'm going to call it time. And I love to use this in my gravy. If I don't have roast beef stock that I'm making roast with, then I'll use this, some, a can of beef stock. And this one is um, half the sodium. But you can use whichever kind of beef broth or stock you want to use. And I'm going to pour that in there. Be careful of the steam. Y'all see that steam coming up. And whisk this in as I'm going. This just makes your gravy that much more flavorful rather than water. I did that years ago, and now I can't go back. <laughs> Y'all see how nicely it's thickened up already. I might have to add some more stock to it. I believe I am. I believe I am. Got me a second can here, guys, which I'm feeding my whole family, so that's fine. That's just fine. I think I put more than a quarter cup of the oil and flour. That's the reason why I'm needing some more. I'm going to whisk till I get it the right consistency here. With my beef broth, I keep saying stock, but this is just some broth. I think I'll go and put that whole can. I'll be perfect. Just perfect. Now I'll crank it back on. Turn it back up. And I'll let this come to a good boil. And then turn it down on low. And it will be ready to put on our mashed potatoes. Yes, it will. And I like to put just a little bit of fresh ground pepper in here at this point. Totally.